Welcome to this normal and heroic guide for Alderman Legacy of Tear. This dungeon will be available to players at level 60 on the first day of phase 2 of the Dragonflight pre-patch, so no mythic mechanics are shown in this video. The first boss of the dungeon is a trio of dwarves who have two abilities each, as well as a shared ultimate ability. The group should stay fairly spread from the tank, as Balog's Wild Cleave will deal physical damage to anyone within 10 yards of him. He will also fire heavy arrows which travel in a straight line, dealing physical damage to anyone in the line of fire. Eric will use Skullcracker at random targets, which deals physical damage to players within 5 yards of impact, as well as disorienting them for 3 seconds. His second ability is Dagger Throw, which is targeted at random players and deals 100% of his normal damage to them. Olaf will hurl his shield at a random player to deal physical damage, and then ricochet to a maximum of 5 other players within 5 yards of the targeted player. This is another mechanic that can be managed by the group being fairly spread, although the boss room is small and awkward to manoeuvre. Olaf will also attempt to shield the other dwarfs to reduce their damage taken by 75% for 12 seconds. Watch out for this and interrupt it. If any of the dwarves reach 100 energy, they will retreat to the longboat that floats above the boss room. The bosses will also retreat to the longboat at 10% health if they aren't already there. The longboat will use searing cannon fire that targets every player and continuously bombards their locations with cannons that deal damage and knock anyone back who is caught in the area of effect. Being hit will deal initial fire damage as well as additional fire damage over 12 seconds, and this stacks for every cannon hit you take. For each dwarf aboard the longboat, the rate of fire of these cannons is increased, so once they have all retreated, nuke them down quickly to stop your group from being overrun with cannon fire. The next boss is Bromac. He will call in Stone Vault Trog adds throughout the fight, who have their own mechanics to deal with, which we will look at in just a moment. Bromac will use Thundering Slam, which is an AoE mechanic that deals nature damage to any players within 12 yards of the boss. Move out of this to avoid unnecessary damage. He will also cast Bloodlust, which is a fairly long cast that grants him 30% haste for 20 seconds. This effect is also applied to any Stone Vault Trog adds currently in the fight, and in testing, Bloodlust was not interruptible. The boss will call in Stone Vault Ambushers and Geomancers during the encounter. Ambushers will use Ambush on random players, which deals physical damage to anyone within 4 yards of the targeted location. Stone Vault Geomancers have two casts which can both be interrupted. Chain Lightning will arc lightning between up to three players to deal nature damage to each of them, and Stone Spike will target one player and deal nature damage to them too. The adds will be called in fairly often, but you can kill them quickly by using Bromac's final ability, Quaking Totem. The Quaking Totem will spawn somewhere in the room and pulse for AoE damage every two seconds with Shocking Quake. However, when the totem is destroyed, it will stun every active trog ad in the fight and cause them to take 200% increased damage for 10 seconds. This is the best way to manage the adds and make sure your group is not overrun. The next boss is Sentinel Talondris. She will begin the encounter with two stacks of Inexorable, making her immune to the next two stun effects. While she is protected, she charges up Ancient Dynamo over time. If her Ancient Dynamo reaches 100, she will cast Titanic Empowerment, making her immune to crowd control and increasing her damage done by 50% for 30 seconds. To stop her from gaining Ancient Dynamo, she can be kited through the resonating orbs that spawn throughout the encounter at players' locations. Stepping into an orb will stun anyone for 6 seconds. That includes both players and the boss. You will need to run her through two orbs initially to break her inexorable stacks, and then once she is stunned a third time, her ancient dynamo will reset and begin recharging. That is the main mechanic of the fight, but she will also cast Crushing Stomp throughout the encounter, which deals physical damage and knocks players back. Be careful not to be knocked into an orb. Her final ability is Earthen Shards, 
which initially deal physical damage and then leaves a bleed effect on her target, which ticks for physical damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. The penultimate boss is Emberon. Around the edge of the room, there will be Vault Keeper adds, which will be immune to damage at the start of the encounter. Throughout the fight, they will constantly throw out orbs that deal fire damage to anyone struck by one, but they move slowly and predictably as they are targeted at players, so they should be easy enough to dodge. Ignore these adds until Phase 2. Emberon will use Searing Clap on his tank to deal fire damage in a cone in front of him, so the tank should face Emberon away from the rest of the group. Every time he uses Searing Clap, the group is affected with Burning Heat, which is a dot that deals fire damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Unstable Embers targets a couple of players and places a ring around each of them. When it expires, the Embers erupt and deal fire damage to anyone within 7 yards of the affected player. This is easy enough to avoid if your group stays spread. At 100 energy, Emberon moves to the centre of the room and activates 4 Vault Keeper adds to shield him with Sacred Barrier, making him immune to damage. While shielded, Emberon will also channel Purging Flames which causes 4 beams of fire to rotate around the room, dealing heavy fire damage to players caught by it, so keep on the move during this phase. Fire Wave also causes Emberon to pulse for AoE fire damage to all players, dealing damage over time until the end of the phase. The Vault Keepers will be vulnerable during this time, and your group needs to kill each of them to end the phase. They will be channeling the shield onto the boss, so they don't need to be tanked, and your group can even split up to kill multiple Vault Keepers at once, if they can survive. Once every Vault Keeper has been killed, you return to phase 1 to repeat the encounter. The final boss is Chrono Lord Deus. He begins the encounter with 100 temporal energy, which he uses to spawn eternity orbs. These orbs float down from above, dealing AoE damage once they hit the floor, in addition to leaving behind a pool called an eternity zone. Stepping into an eternity zone will deal arcane damage to players every one second, and reduce their haste by 30% as long as they remain in the zone. These Eternity Zones also grow in size until the boss runs out of energy, so use the floor space effectively to prevent the room from getting too full. Once he runs out of Temporal Energy, Deus will cast Rewind Time Flow to recharge his energy. This deals damage to players every 1 second for 12 seconds, as well as turning Eternity Zones into Temporal Zones. During this phase, your screen will change colour, and now is the time to step into one of the pools on the ground, as they will grant you 50% haste while you are standing in one. That is the main mechanic of the encounter, but the boss will also use Wing Buffet to deal physical damage and knock all players back. He will also aim Sand Breath at the tank, which is a frontal ability that deals heavy arcane damage to anyone caught in it, so tanks should once again face the boss away from the group. The only change in this dungeon on heroic difficulty is the added ability to this boss called Time Sync. Time Sync will deal arcane damage to one player every second and reduce their movement speed for 9 seconds. This is a magic effect so it can be dispelled, but either when it is dispelled or it expires, it causes a time eruption, dealing damage to the whole group and knocking them back, so healers need to be mindful of when to dispel. That's everything you need to know for Alderman Legacy of Tear. Thank you very much for watching, best of luck in the new dungeon and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!